Hello and welcome to this video course, Periscope for Entrepreneurs. You are now looking at the mobile live streaming application, Periscope. And Periscope is now showing on an Android device. And it actually is a very important application in today's live streaming culture. And it's giving entrepreneurs the opportunity to connect with buyers in a way that in the past they have not been able to connect. Now you might be asking, what exactly is Periscope? And as we said, Periscope is a live streaming application and it was purchased and developed by Twitter in early 2015. And it's a very extremely unique platform and it allows viewers to share their lives, share their business, share what's happening with them in real time. And they can do that wherever they are. Obviously, it's a mobile application. So wherever your mobile app can be, wherever there's a connection, you have the opportunity to live stream. And you can actually connect with anyone who wants to watch. Now, the, the beauty of Periscope is that it is simple to use. So anyone who has a mobile device, anyone who has a camera on that mobile device can use Periscope. And the other thing is that it's completely fee free. There are no webinar fees. There are no, uh, there are no cost the application. It is totally free to use. And that really is going to bring power to the application, not only in bringing buyers and prospects to your particular Periscope broadcast, but also in your ability to broadcast to them without hosting fees or without having to worry that you're uh, that, that you're overstepping in terms of bandwidth. Now, in order to get started, all the user really has to do is download the Periscope app from the app store of their choice. Now, presently, uh, that application is not available for Windows Phone. It's only available for iTunes or Android. The other thing is that, for the most part, Periscope is not available in an easy way to be used on a desktop computer. And you'll see that, that even if you were to go to the website, periscope.tv, you'll see that the only way to really interact with the, uh, with the website or the application is to download the app from the App Store or the Google Play uh, for the Android device. Now, when we talk about ease of use, we're basically saying that all you really have to do with your mobile device is turn on your camera when you want to broadcast your applications and your activities. Now, when you turn off the camera, you're done. And you then have the ability to reach anyone that you are following in addition to anyone who happens to find your live broadcast. So you're talking about being able to broaden your net talking about being able to reach out to people who might be interested in your topic area, they might be interested in your niche, and whenever you are broadcasting live, just like any other uh, old world television show, you are going to be able to find new buyers, new prospects, and people who are interested in what it is that you have to offer. And you'll see that as it was bought by Twitter, it looks very similar to Twitter. It looks like any other social network in that you have followers and you have people that you can actually connect through, connect with through the application. Now, because Twitter, because Twitter is uh, interactive, Periscope is also interactive. And so it gives buyers and it gives prospects and it gives people who come to watch your live broadcast the ability to message you, the ability, ability for you to talk back to them again. And all of that is happening in real time. And this is what's really powerful about this particular application. And it's why it's really catching on with people, whether or not they are involved in business or whether or not they're not, it's really allowing people to connect with people on a different level as things are happening. And that's really why this application, unlike others, have really catching on sometimes in some ways even more so than webinars. And this is going to be a powerful way for people to connect in the future so that you'll be able to be more transparent with your buyers and then make yourself to, to, to be able to overcome that barrier of being known, of being liked, and being trusted. It is your opportunity to connect with people either before the sale, during the sale, and after the sale. And that is what we will be talking about in this video course. So with that, thanks, and I will see you in the next video. Welcome back to Periscope for Entrepreneurs. And in this video, we will discuss the topic of why you should care about Periscope. Now, the Periscope app is free to everyone who uses it, and it uses the contacts you already have to help you to get a foothold in video social media. 
because the integration between Periscope is seamless when it comes to the social network Twitter. That means that every Twitter user is a potential Periscope user, even though it's still possible for a user to join with just a mobile phone number. So if you haven't had a chance to really build your following in a social network like Twitter, you now have the opportunity to do so and to do so with the medium of video. Now, basically, with Periscope, and one of the reasons why it's so incredibly uh, powerful in terms of being able to get people to connect with you is because it's allowing your Twitter followers not only to see what you write, but it's also allowing them to see the world through your eyes as you're experiencing it in real time. Of course, yes, they'll be able to see a recording, but those who connect with you live can see the world as you're seeing it. It really allows what Russell, what marketer Russell Brunson calls to build an attractive character in real time. So in other words, people are going to become, uh, they're going to become familiar with your life as you're experiencing it, not as you email it to them, not as you tell them about it. They'll be able to see it as you really are. And what you're basically doing with your customers and you're doing it over the over the internet, you're doing it through a powerful medium like Twitter over social media, is you are building a personal relationship. And you're doing that without spending an enormous amount of money on branding. And this is very important. So the, the impression that you're gonna be creating in your customer's mind, you'll be able to do that with this powerful medium called Periscope. And really, if you want to know whether or not this really works and whether or not it's really something that, uh, that, that really will help you to build that connection with people, big brands are already doing this. They've already discovering this by creating the role of broadcaster with popular icons in society as well as creating those roles with people in their company. Now, what do we mean by that, either with popular icons or people in the role in their company? Well, for example... Automaker Nissan used Periscope to live stream the revealing of a new model of its car called the Maxima. And so they were able to bring an audience with their Twitter following using live video without paying anything for the actual, the actual event, the actual branding. Fast food restaurant uh, uh, in the United States called Taco Bell live streamed its celebration of an event, a special event on the calendar by revealing a new product. So they were able to combine a special event, they were able to combine the revealing of a new product, and they were able to do this with Periscope, with their Twitter following. Retailers, um, J.C. Penney had a famous actress, her name is Eva Longoria here in the United States, and uh, she was able to introduce followers to a new line of betting. Now, the product is not as important as the fact that the process that was used was, again, live streaming. It was Periscope, and it was done using uh, uh, Twitter and all of the other social media followings as, again, instead of spending uh, a, a large sum on, on uh, expensive commercial uh, video production. There was a cosmetic retailer, and the name of that cosmetic retailer is not as important as the fact that they use Periscope to do a live Q&A about a new line of products. So instead of just putting a, a live Q&A written on the page where a person goes and has to do all the reading, they were able to allow people to experience them live. So again, being able to do things like direct people to call to action, which we'll talk about later in terms of how you're going to be able to leverage Periscope you're able to do all of this in real time. And in other cases, conference attendees. Now when they attend a conference, they're able to give a behind the scenes look of any ceremony, any conference, as they're there, as they're experiencing it again, by allowing people to see through their eyes what's really happening. And again, what happens is that the audience builds a connection with the person who's actually giving them the experience. Now, here's, here's why you should really care. Understanding all of what uh, we just talked about, if you rely solely on, uh, let, let's say, static video or social media, what you're doing is you're really giving way to those who are willing to be more transparent with this live streaming application. Um, and, and they're gonna be more present 
with them. They're going to be more transparent with them. And these are your target market. So while they're spending time with people who are doing live streaming, again, you're missing out on that connection. So whether or not you're going to be effective with email over time will probably be dependent on the connection that you're able to make with them. And you can actually do that with live streaming, with the Periscope app. Now, in order to build a, a, a relationship, and this is key when you're talking about selling, whether or not you're selling digital products or physical products, if you're going to build a relationship where you are known, liked, and trusted, buyers are going to become more and more dependent on being able to be present with you by using these live streaming technologies. And that is why they're going to be so important as time goes on both now and in the future. And so this is really why one of the key reasons why you should begin caring about Periscope and what it can do for you. So with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Periscope for Entrepreneurs. And in this video, we're going to be discussing growing your Periscope audience. Now, if you are engaged with your audience throughout your broadcast, it's likely that increasing your following is going to do some things for your business that you couldn't do otherwise. For instance, uh, growing your Periscope audience will mean that you'll probably uh, grow your sales and your customers. There's no guarantee with that, but you will have more people to know, like, and trust you. And so when you do make offers and you do bring offers before people, they're more likely to be familiar with you. They're more likely to trust what your recommendations are, and they're more likely to buy. You are likely to grow more audience, a bigger audience and more fans. And what that means is that when you have webinars, when you have when you have uh, events, you're likely to have people that are going to come because they're interested in you, because they are familiar with you, because they have connected with you. And these are going to be the people, audience and your fans, that when you put out content, they will share that content on their social media outlets, on their social media followings. So having a big audience, having lots of fans, having people who like your content, that's very important. And when you have a growing Periscope audience, these are the kinds of benefits that come to you. You're probably going to have more prospects. You're going to have more people that are not necessarily going to be ready to buy when you first make an offer to them, but because they're hearing your content and because they like connecting with you, they're going to be in position so that when they hear the right offer, they're gonna be ready to buy. So growing your Periscope audience by getting people to like you and be familiar with you will help you to do all of the things that put the, the, the metrics that end up growing your business in the right direction. So you want to use Periscope and you want to make sure that it's increasing the reach that you get to more people across more social networks that you would not have reached otherwise. Now, Social media experts suggest there are three basic ways to grow a Periscope audience so that you get these benefits. First, you want to make sure that you're notifying everyone on all of your social media channels. And when you do that, you want to be specific about stating time. So in other words, if your broadcast is at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, make sure that you state it in specific time. Make sure that you state it in Eastern Time or, or Mountain Time or all of the various times that people are going to be visiting you around the world. In most cases, you're going to want to make sure that you mention the GMT time. This will eliminate confusion for people to try to figure out when they need to be in your broadcast, when, they, when they're uh, going to be able to catch you, you want people not to leave that to chance. You want them to know exactly when your broadcast is going to be so that they can be there. Now, second, you're going to have the opportunity to name your scopes. You're going to name them ahead of time. Now, what you have to remember as a marketer is that you don't want to name this by chance and you don't want to name it based on the content you're presenting. You have to write your titles. You have to write your uh, you, you know, your entryway in a way that's going to entice people to want to come to it based on when they see it. And so you have to use the basic rules of copywriting. And that basic rule is you want to, to 
communicate what people and how they're going to benefit from your broadcast. So in terms of trying to write a title, you want to keep your title short, yes. You want to make sure that you're specific, but most importantly is you want to err to the side of making sure that you talk about what's going to benefit your audience rather than what they're going to get in terms of content. So again, these are basic copywriting rules that you want to follow when you're writing your titles, when you're writing what people are going to see in order to decide on whether or not they're going to actually come to your broadcast. Now in a related sense, you have the opportunity to use t hashtags because Twitter uh, as a language uses hashtags. So you want to use that Twitter language in your title. So you also want to try to think about copywriting rules. Can you write a hashtag that again communicates benefits but you also want to be thinking about what are effective hashtags. So in other words, you know, what hashtags are people really following? You know, what hashtag really brands you so that even if it's not a popular hashtag, it can become one based on the fact that you're using it and you're branding yourself in that way, as well as trending hashtags when they're relevant to what it is that you're doing on your broadcast. So again, the whole title, um, and social media experts recommend that you take that seriously. You don't want to, to, to overthink it. You don't want to spend a whole day trying to write a title. But at the same time, though, the better you can write that title, the more likely you're going to be for people to find the title, the more likely you're going to be for people to click on the title or to choose the title in order to attend a broadcast. Now, third, do your scope broadcast on a regular schedule. And you want to treat them like serial programming, treat them like uh, cliffhangers. So in other words, when people know that they're going to be able to come to a scope on a regular basis, same time, same place, and you treat it as if it's a, it, as if it's a cliffhanger, that they've got, to, they've got to come to the next broadcast in order to find out what's really next. So you've got to leave clues. We talked about this in the previous, vi previous videos. You have to leave clues and you have to leave trailers and breadcrumbs that give people a desire to come to the next one. So you you should be seeding that next Periscope broadcast throughout your your the, the, throughout the Periscope broadcast that you're doing right now. Okay? Make people want to come back. And of course, now related to that, when it's relevant, the more often you scope. Now, this is not a concrete rule. But in general, most social media experts agree that the more often you scope the scope, the more that your audience is going to grow. People like momentum and people like to see that this is going to be something that they can rely on. So again, if you if, if you have the, the, the discipline and you have the ability to scope daily, then do that. There is a benefit to that and your audience is likely to grow. Now as a bonus, um, there's another. Attend the scopes of other people. Uh, other periscopers and it's and, and share their broadcasts uh, when possible when you're when you're there uh, give them likes this is the kind of activity that number one people will feel as if they have to uh, to, to, to reciprocate in some way and so no you don't want to always take uh, the influencers and go to theirs and expect them to do for you but when you have people that are are sharp in your niche you have people that are giving good value attend their broadcast, be a good neighbor, do unto them as you would have them do back to you. So really take seriously when, when people are giving that, that kind of value that those are going to be the kinds of things that you want to pass on to other people, that you want them to know about, that you want to share with other people. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Periscope for Entrepreneurs. And in this video, we're going to be talking about tips for the actual broadcast. Now, Periscope is an engagement application. The, the benefit of having a live stream, the benefit of having people that are going to be present who can comment to you and giving you the ability to easily comment back is to be able to engage them. So when people come to your broadcast, make sure to acknowledge them by name. Make sure to acknowledge that they are present 
that if you know them from the past that you that you somehow indicate that that you somehow indicate some familiarity or indeed some level of intimacy now don't be too busy delivering your content in order to answer an important question now there is always a balance to this but again the key to Periscope and the thing that separates it and other live streaming technologies from being able to do a video, even sometimes a webinar, is being able to be right there present with the individuals and to be able to almost have a dialogue and a conversation. So you want to treat your Periscope broadcast as a, a conversation. Now there's a phrase that some professional speakers use it's called visiting and that means that you're you're basically engaging with your audience and making small talk and getting to know your guests and really talking about things that are part of everyday life now this should probably not be a part of your your broadcast unless you come on your cast early to do this but don't use your live broadcast in order to do a lot of visiting again remember that you're probably going to be going back you're probably going to be making a recording out of it so again you don't want to waste people's time you want to make sure that if you're going to be on that when people come to the broadcast if you've scheduled it for five o'clock that when people come that they're going to get what they have come for um, attention spans are very transitory and so you want to make sure that you're giving people what you promised them now this is very important uh, the Periscope does have the uh, capacity for people to be able to show their appreciation for the content you're delivering and they can do that by giving you hearts now there are some who say that it's in bad taste to ask for them um, and as well as for people to be able to share your broadcast. Now again, just as you would in Facebook, just as you would in creating videos, you're going to have to to make a judgment call based on your niche, based on your audience. So in some cases, you may not get people to share your broadcast unless you ask them. In other cases, if, if your audience is a little more sensitive to that, you're going to need to be aware of that. And you don't want to follow a traditional convention just because everyone else is doing it. This is something that really has to do with you knowing your audience when you're actually broadcasting. Not possible again. Um, try to work from an outline, but, but try not to use notes. This engagement technology is about being live, it's about being present, it's about demonstrating your expertise, it's about being the go-to person. You can do that very easily if, if it doesn't look like, again, this is something that you're staging. Right now, uh, there's a social media expert, her name is Sandra Trump. She suggests that throughout the broadcast, because of the fact that on Periscope, you're going to have people who stumble on your broadcast, you take time to reintroduce yourself throughout the broadcast saying things like this is Thomas Duncan and I'm with Internet Marketers Alliance doing that throughout the broadcast and saying that really giving people the opportunity again to connect with you if they want to go check you out on the web all of those things are very important again to have people connect with what you're doing and to come back to your future broadcasts. now uh, Ms. Troff also suggests that you avoid long periods of dead air so don't leave long periods of silence again attention spans are very uh, very delicate you don't want to leave that to chance and so it's almost better to have a shorter broadcast where you you're kind of keeping things moving rather than to stretch it out and have long periods of dead air so really if make sure your your contents uh, kind of ready to go make sure you know it well go ahead and deliver it but again try to avoid those long uh, awkward silences through your broadcast and and throughout your broadcast this is this would be uh, the case if you were doing a webinar or any kind of speaking ask for feedback constantly ask your audience questions give them the opportunity to answer give them the opportunity to engage with you get them talking the more that they are a part of an experience the more that they'll remember what it is that you're doing and the more that they will uh, decide to make a decision to come back to what it is that you're doing now if, if you really want engagement Right, and you, you sort of know the people that are going to be there. Don't be afraid to ask specific questions of individuals if you know them well and you know they're present. 
So, so if you need to ask someone and you'd say, Thomas, what do you think about this? Or Jane, what do you think about this particular marketing strategy? You can say those things when you know the individuals that are going to be there. Now, again, you don't want to do this with people that you don't know and people who would not appreciate it and people who would find it distasteful. But when you have people that you can engage with, that you can call them my name, what this does is this really almost encourages people to want their names to be called. And they will stay on the broadcast and they will engage with you so that, again, you will engage with them. People are really looking for connection and that's what really Periscope does provide to people. And treat your broadcast as something that visitors will need to come back to. So don't don't use it as a one-time event um, like a webinar. Again, this is, this is almost like a, a, a serial, something that people have got to come back to in order to get the whole story. And that doesn't mean that you don't deliver all your content. You do want to deliver all your content, but at the same time though, Engage with people as if this is going to be regular. You're going to, you, I'm going to want you to come back, or the next time we do this, or next week when we get together, or uh, next month in our in our broadcast. Here's what we're going to talk about. Give people seeds to know that they're going to be able to come back and get more of what it is that you have to offer. Again, this is a branding opportunity. It's a is a chance for you to almost leave a cliffhanger in the minds of the people who are coming to your broadcast. Lastly, one of the things that you are going to want to do is to decide whether or not you want someone to know your location um, and make sure it's only enabled if it benefits your business. Uh, if, if it doesn't benefit your business, then, then you know, it can be a needless distraction. Uh, and, and, it, and it may or may not lend itself to people engaging with you more. And, and sometimes people will focus on the wrong thing if you have uh, a location there. And what it does is it, it kind of takes people down the wrong path, not towards buying and not towards thinking about your product and not toward thinking about your expertise, but thinking about where they're from and how they're connected to you. So, again... If it benefits your, your broadcast, if it benefits your business, broadcast it. If it doesn't, don't feel as if you can't not, uh, not allow people to know where you're broadcasting from. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Periscope for Entrepreneurs. And in this video, we're going to be talking about some tips for you to follow before you actually hit the broadcast button. Now actually activating your Periscope broadcast is going to be very easy. All you really need to do is enable your camera and you will instantly be broadcasting live on Periscope. Now there are some tips that you are going to want to follow so that your live stream will have the maximum benefit for your business. You want to leave a positive brand impression uh, with your with your prospect, with the person who is watching you, so that they will come and opt into your pages, so that they will buy your products and services, so that they will come to your events. You want to make sure that the connection you make with them is a good one and a positive one. Now you want to make sure your profile is memorable. So you don't just want to, let's say, use your, your, your name and your title. Uh, those things are going to come over pretty much uh, with your Twitter profile, you want to make sure that your title engages. Who is your target audience? This is copywriting, so you want to speak to the people that you want to attract to your Periscope broadcast. Consider this to be something that you're going to be doing on an ongoing basis. Who do you want to come back to your Periscope broadcast? And you want to start writing your profile in order to speak to those people. Now, you don't have a lot of space, so make sure that that profile, whatever you write in there, is memorable. And just remember that the link will not be clickable. So this is not going to be something that they're going to see and click on in order to come to your website. That's important before the actual broadcast is to already have your call to action ready. So that means that whatever link you're going to be using, make sure it's something that's going to be short and easy to follow and memorize. The wrong time to try to redo a link or to try to redo something is when you're on a live broadcast. That'll almost defeat the purpose of, uh, of, of leaving that positive brand impression. So test your links. Make sure that they're ready. Make sure that they're short. Make sure that there's something that you can say quickly and that if your, if your, your viewer or your prospect says it over to themselves, that they'll be able to go and find it very easily. 
Now make sure your setting, uh, your settings are enabled uh, to store the video after it's completed. And we're going to make a suggestion to you as to how to do this. But there are settings inside of Periscope that we've talked about. And you want to make sure that those settings are ready to go and that your video will be there once it's time for you to get the broadcast and turn it into other content. Now, uh, internet marketer Barbara Ling suggests that you want to set up an account for the automatic storage of your broadcast at catch.com. And so you can set up an account over there in order to capture all of your broadcasts. She also suggests setting up notifications to auto post to other social media such as Zapier, uh, IFT, uh, prior to and during the event. So in other words, you want to make sure that you're getting the maximum following. And so you want to make sure that when you set up a broadcast, it goes out to all of the various social media accounts that you're associated with where there are going to be people who might want to follow you who, for the most part, maybe they don't use Twitter, maybe they're not going to be looking at a Periscope broadcast, but if you put it in your social media stream of some of those other venues, they will actually come to your screen. So think about getting that link auto-posted to Facebook. Think about getting it uh, auto-posted to LinkedIn Get it or, or Tumblr if that's what you use. Think about using Reddit. Okay, another very popular site and think about of course using Twitter you want to make sure that every place where there are people who are going to be reading and and looking at what it is that you're doing that they have the opportunity to come and experience your broadcast <coughs> any other social media networks that you're going to be a part of make sure that you're posting to those networks you want to make sure that the uh, again that people who are connected to you, who are following your work for any way, that they're coming to your live broadcast because those are going to be the people who are going to share out that broadcast to other people who are not part of your network. Now, the other thing that you want to do before your actual broadcast, and, and this kind of goes without saying, but it's important to mention, again, it's, it's, it's nearly impossible to try to recover this um, during the broadcast. So make sure your call to action pages are working. Your sales page, your opt-in page, whatever your giveaway is. Uh, you don't want people to get to these things after you've given a great presentation, after feeling very positive. You don't want them to cool off because these things are not working and them having to email your support or email you to tell you that they'd like to get what you promised them. But again, um, you may not have had those things ready. So test those things prior to, prior to you actually getting on the broadcast. Okay, now, your physical background, before you broadcast, before you turn on the camera, take a look around behind you. Make sure that there isn't any junk. Make sure that it's not messy. Make sure that there's nothing that's going to be distracting in the background. There are, there are backgrounds called shoji screens, S-H-O-J-I, where you can get them and you can put them behind you so that it shows a background that doesn't show a lot of glare. It'll give the viewer something that they can kind of look at and kind of focus on that will not detract from your actual broadcast. So again, don't have a lot of, a, a lot of busyness and a lot of messiness in your background when you're broadcasting. Check your lighting. Okay, is, is your lighting adequate? Now, this might be something that you need to do a test stream to make sure of. Um, do you need some lighting? Do those things beforehand because, again, a live broadcast is a wrong time in order to try to figure it out. Now, of course, live streaming is, is a little more forgiving. And if you can connect with people and you're good in front of people, maybe you're good on the stage and maybe you're good, uh, a good speaker, good extemporaneous speaker, all of those things will help you. However... Bad lighting will detract from your presentation. Do that ahead of time. And don't write a script is, is, is the recommendation from most experts who are doing Periscope. And the reason is because the point of doing Periscope in the first place is really to connect with people and to share your expertise. And it's really hard to do that 
when you're reading from a script. And when you're reading from a script and the camera is on you, it will be evident. It will be obvious that you were reading from a script and you don't want that for your live broadcast. So so try to, to speak from an outline if you need to. Um, if you need to use another monitor to do it, uh, use another monitor. The point again is to, is to connect with people and to and to give and to give yourself a likability. And you, and it's hard to do that if you're focusing on how you're delivering the content. Okay, so those are tips that you can actually follow before you actually get started in your broadcast. So with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, you are actually looking at the dashboard of an Android mobile device. And what we are going to do in this video is we are actually going to do a brief and basic setup of Periscope. Now, if you have an iOS device or an Apple device, the setup is going to be just the same, except you'll be doing what I'll be doing on your Apple device. Now what you'll need to do first is you'll need to find your store. And in this case, since we're using the Android, we're going to need to find the Play Store. And in this particular case, we're looking at the Android device and we want to find the Play Store. Now obviously, if you're using the iOS device, you're going to be looking at trying to find the iTunes Store. So we're going to log in to the Play Store. And then once we find the Play Store, what we're going to do is we're going to do a search and we're going to search for the application Periscope. And all you need to do is type in Periscope. And when you see the symbol for Periscope, you'll see it come up on the search. All you'll need to do is to click or to touch Periscope. And when you do that, then uh, the Periscope application is going to come open on the Android device or your iOS device. Now, what's important to note is that there are certain levels of uh, Android device that will not take the Periscope application. Uh, at, this, at this present moment, if your application is below 4.4 in the Android operating system, you cannot take the Periscope application, so you must have an application of 4.4 and above. Now, in this particular case, I already have the Periscope application installed. Therefore, if you see a button and it says that you have the ability to install, you'll want to go ahead and click the install button. And at Periscope will then install on your mobile application. If you do not see this, you'll typically see a message that says that Periscope is, is, not, uh, is not compatible with your device and you'll need to make sure that your uh, operating system is upgraded so that you'll be able to take the Periscope application. Now once you've actually installed the Periscope application you'll then want to click open. Now you are going to come to a screen that looks similar to the one that you're looking at right now and if you have a Twitter account connected to the uh, application that you're using you're going to be able to log in with that Twitter account to connect it to Periscope. If you choose not to use a Twitter account, you can actually use a phone number in order to log in to Periscope and set up your, set up your account. Now in this case, I'm going to go ahead and click the account that says log in with Twitter. Now when you do this, you are going to need to allow Periscope in order to access your Twitter account and to use it. Remember that we talked about the fact that this application is very closely aligned with Twitter. Now in this particular case, if you want to switch accounts after you've already established one, you can do that. So you can actually use your Periscope application on your mobile device with multiple accounts. You'll just need to make sure that you log out every particular time. If we tap the tap to switch accounts, you'll see that your Google application, and typically your iOS will too, will give you the opportunity to add an account with which you can sign into your Periscope application with another Twitter account. Now in this particular case, we're going to go ahead and use the Twitter account that we're already connected to. That means then we're going to allow Twitter to use our account, so we're going to click allow. 
then Periscope, just like Twitter, will take you through a series of situations where you can actually uh, start by following with people who are already part of your Twitter following. So now there are a couple of different screens that once you get inside of Twitter account that we'll be talking about in future videos. Now we just want to take a brief tour and we'll expand on that tour in a future video. But you'll be able to see a global list of, of streams that you can actually watch. And you'll need to do that by tapping the view global list. And then you're going to see other places where there are actually streams that are going on. You can also go to this tab where you can actually connect with some of your Twitter following as well as other people who are already on Periscope. Now important to note that when you go and you, and you tap on the global list, you're going to see a little tab there in the right hand corner. If we click that tab, what's going to happen is you're going to see a number of streams that you can actually join and actually listen to. Again, we're going to be talking about this in future videos, but that's a basic getting started inside of Periscope. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Periscope for Entrepreneurs. And in this video, we are going to take a more in-depth look inside of what you can do in the Periscope app. And of course, what we're going to do again is we're going to log into the app. We're going to find it in our dashboard. And we're just going to click and open it. Now, in the very first tab, when you open Periscope, what you're going to do is you're going to see the people who you are following. So just like you would in any other social media situation, you'll be able to see who's actually broadcasting while you're on. The other thing that you can see in this screen are the past uh, streams that you have attended within the last 24 hours. Now again, uh, Periscope actually deletes uh, all of the streams within 24 hours, but we'll talk about what you can do with yours. But in this particular case, you'll see all the streams here on this page that you have attended. We're going to move now to the second tab. And in this second tab, what you're going to do is once again, now we showed you this in the last video, we do want to talk about this a little more. And you're going to see numbers in each one of these places, and it's going to show you the numbers of live streams that are actually happening in these places. And what you're going to do, you're seeing is a global list of the live public broadcasts that you can join in these locations. If you click in any of these circles, you'll see all of the public broadcasts that you can join. Now, obviously, some of the broadcasts that are happening are not showing here, and they're private. And we'll be getting into that in a future video. But what we can do is we can check to see any of these that we can actually join. Now, the other tab that's available in the second tab is we can actually, uh, we can actually toggle this. We're going to click this link. And what's going to happen is you're going to see uh, other live broadcasts on this screen. And here's where you'll see an expanded image of what's actually happening in the stream and you can click inside or tap the screen on any of these places if you want to join these particular screens. You can scroll down into more of them on this screen. Now the tab in this corner is going to be your broadcast tab. And this is where you'll actually start your own live broadcast if you're ready to stream to someone or if you're ready to stream and you're ready other, for others to join. Now we're going to, we're going to move away from this tab for now and we're going to enter into the last, or the last tab. And this is where you can actually look up users to follow. Uh, Periscope will actually organize things according to the people that you're already following on Twitter as well as people that you're following on Periscope. And so if you click inside of these particular, uh, these particular areas, when you click the follow button, you'll actually be following them on Periscope. Now in the far right hand corner, you're actually going to see your profile button. And you can actually tap the screen and it's going to open up into a screen where you've got information again. All this does is just organize the information that you already know. You'll see the people you're following, people who are following you, blocked and broadcast. Now, one of the things that you'll want to take note of is that you do have the ability to change your profile. 
And so you can actually go to this area, depending on how your mobile device is organized, you can then actually uh, change some of what you see here. And as you can see here, you can actually change the display name here and you can actually put in there and you can actually change your tagline. Okay, and when you're done, you can just click the checkbox. You can actually uh, you can actually change your uh, your photo profile. You can either use uh, images that are already on your hard drive or already in your profile, and you can re-upload that profile into that picture area by clicking this button. Okay, you can actually take a picture with the camera that's already there, or you can actually choose one that's available. And you'll probably recognize right away that what's happened is that Periscope has actually imported your profile from Twitter. So whatever you have in your Twitter profile is pretty much what it brought over as default. Now one thing that you are going to see here is you're going to see hearts here. And these hearts are an indication of people who are showing their appreciation for what you're sharing with them on the live broadcast. Uh, and they can actually do that by touching their screen and then you will actually have a heart sent to you and your profile will be updated with the number of people that do that. Now there's also the settings area and we're going to take a look at that right now. And all of these are default settings with the exception of auto saving your broadcast. So if you want your broadcast auto saved and in most cases since you're going to be using this as content uh, you will want to make sure your broadcast is auto saved. Now if you're using this as uh, in, in some other way and you don't need to auto save the content then you can leave this unticked but you'll need to tick this in order to auto save the broadcast if you want to upload your uh, your content into YouTube or something of that nature. Now in order to go back to the previous screen depending on how your mobile device, device is configured there typically is an arrow here at the top or someplace where you can go back to the profile area. Now when you actually decide to join a stream live, and we'll just join a random stream here, and we're going to actually uh, not join the stream, but one of the things that you want to be note of is that um, what you can do is you can actually uh, click or press the, uh, the link here that will allow you to comment. And this is an indication right here at the bottom as to how many people are actually on the stream. Okay, and you can actually make your comment uh, in here. Now in some cases what will happen is um, there will already be more than enough people on a stream and the broadcast will be full. Um, if that is the case then you will actually have to wait or you'll have to watch the replay. Now one of the key aspects of a Periscope broadcast is that you can actually have your physical location or whoever's broadcasting can actually broadcast their physical location. So in some cases where you're looking to do local marketing or you're marketing to people in your local area, this is going to be very important because you're going to be able to have people uh, associate where you are with what it is that you are broadcasting. Of course, if you want, <clears throat> you want to follow someone, all you have to do is click their profile and then you'll be able to follow them. So that is your tour of the actual uh, dashboard. Now in the next video we are going to actually do a brief tour of when you actually want to do a broadcast. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Periscope for Entrepreneurs. And in this video, we're going to be discussing ways that you can monetize Periscope directly. Now, as you have probably discovered throughout this tutorial, is that Periscope is typically an indirect way to make a sale. 
what you're really doing is you're branding and becoming more likable. You're doing it directly by connecting with the customer, connecting with prospects, giving them an opportunity to see you and get to know you, and then making yourself likable and then making your products and your services more viable. But that doesn't mean that Periscope can't be, or in fact, it can be used to bring prospects and customers to direct buying opportunities. And you do that even bringing them there and they're going to have a more favorable outlook on them when they get them there. The point is you can use Periscope to sell directly. Now, here are some ways that marketers, entrepreneurs, info marketers are really using Periscope in order to sell directly. Now, affiliate marketers uh, are directing people to links from a live broadcast. So in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the broadcast or at the end of the broadcast, they're able to send the buyer to a link. They're able to get those people that are already engaged, already like what they've heard, to go to a link. And they're able to do that after having established trust in one broadcast. Now again, uh, you do have to know your audience. You do have to have a product that has some immediacy, perhaps all the traditional aspects of, of copywriting such as scarcity and social proof. However, info marketers can send people direct to a link from a live broadcast. And in particular, you know, some scopes are actually packaged themselves. So we talked about affiliate marketers. Um, you could take your scope, package it up, and sell it as a video course. Now, of course, you will have already given the, 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 the scope live, but there are gonna be a number of people who have never heard of what you're doing. They wouldn't have come to your scope, and if they wouldn't have come in the first 24 hours, they're not gonna get a chance to hear the information. You can package that information up and create a video course and sell it on platforms like Warrior Plus, JVZoo, and the Warrior Forum. And of course, by using Periscope's private setting, you can choose to who gets to actually come and watch the broadcast. So that means you can teach only those who have already paid you. So in effect, what you're doing is you're teaching a class and you're teaching it live and you're only allowing the people who have paid you to come see it. Again, it's an easy way for you to be able to monetize and for you to be able to create content that only a certain number of people are actually going to be able to see. Now, physical product sellers um, can use Periscope to do product demos, which is a fantastic way of being able to demonstrate to people that what they're about to buy actually works. They'll be actually able to see the product in action so that they'll be more willing to buy. And, and you can do this whether or not you're the actual creator or an affiliate. There are no rules against affiliates being able to do product demonstration. So this is a great way to be able to get people engaged, get people to see the actual product and to get them to buy. Kindle authors are using Periscope to connect with their audience. One of the ways in which they get people interested in their book is to let people get to know them, to get people to ask them questions. And people are very interested in authors and how they wrote it and what their, what their, uh, what, what their process was and how they learned what they learned, in particular people who are already experts in the field. And Kindle authors are using this in a way to promote themselves because they don't have traditional publishers. They've got to do all the, pub, the uh, promotion themselves. It's a fun way of being able to connect with the actual audience that's going to buy the actual book. And of course, this is slightly different from a physical product seller who could be the product creator. Affiliate marketers can do product reviews in real time. They can do them for digital products. They can do it for anything that they want, services. Affiliate marketers, this is a great way, again, to get people to see and get people to experience something before they actually go and make the, buy, uh, make the buying uh, decision. And of course, you know, one of the great ways of being able to use Periscope is to create information products with live interviews right there on the spot. So there are a number of ways that both information marketers, affiliate marketers, and entrepreneurs in general can use Periscope in order to bring buyers directly to the actual product or service they're about to buy. And Periscope actually shortens that link and it actually brings people there having already established some trust, having already established likability, and makes a sale 
a, a lot more likely to happen when you're able to do that consistently. So again, Periscope is definitely a branding technology. It definitely does allow people to, to make that indirect sale by, 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 giving them a, get, by giving buyers and prospects a favorable impression. However, Periscope can also be used to bring people in direct contact with links for products and services. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Periscope for Entrepreneurs. And in this video, we're going to be talking about tips that you can follow after the actual broadcast that will help you to maximize the business effect that Periscope is going to have. Now, when you end your broadcast on Periscope, you are going to be presented with statistics. And so what you want to do with those statistics when you get them and when Periscope actually shows them to you is that you want to take a screen grab of those statistics and store them with your actual videos. And what this is going to do is it's really going to give you a record of what happened on the on, on the broadcast and it will give you a good indication. Now, of course, you can do more than doing a screen grab. You can actually put those statistics into a spreadsheet or you can have that portion outsourced. But you want to take the, the statistics that Periscope gives you in some way, shape or form and you want to then store them and so that you know what it is that's happening in each broadcast and you know how to improve them. Now, when your broadcast is over, you are going to have the opportunity to take it from your camera roll and upload it. So you want to upload that video to cloud storage and mainly because this is an easier way to get it someplace where it's not going to be corrupted rather than trying to get it to your hard drive where connections are unreliable it tends to be easier to get them to a cloud drive from Periscope and from your camera roll. So you can do that. Uh, by using Google Photos, a Microsoft OneDrive, Dropbox, iCloud if you use the Mac or copy.com or any cloud service that you're using. You are trying to get your video into a place where it's going to be commonly stored and of course from there then you can then download it to your personal computer but it will be in a safe place when it's there before you actually get it to YouTube in order to be repurposed or whatever it is that you're going to do with it. Which brings us to the next point that <clears throat> When you download that video, you do want to put it to YouTube and you want to do that pretty much right away because the the, the immediacy of the engagement that you've had is going to have a, an effect on those who were unable to attend and it's going to make them want to come to your next broadcast and uh, especially if you are marketing a particular product or service, you are go going to have the opportunity then to really share that product when you get your replay out quickly. So one of the things is you want to get that replay to YouTube as soon as possible and then you want to get that replay from YouTube shared on social media. Now this, uh, this tutorial is not about uh, social media sharing. There are lots of tutorials on how to do that but for the most part you want to as quickly as you can get that video from YouTube out onto the social networks that you frequent as well as those where you might find customers and prospects who are going to be interested in your products and service. Now when inside of those YouTube videos you want to add clickable links that will mean that you're going to be using the annotations function that means that you're going to have to have a website associated with your YouTube video. And you want to have those links leading to the call to action that you did during your actual broadcast or to a page where they can get access to your future broadcast. But typically the best thing that you can do is to make sure that someone who clicks on even that YouTube video has the opportunity to get your call to action and be taken to the page where they can actually do a purchase and get what it is that you have to offer. Once the broadcast is over, one of the things that will influence the next broadcast and will influence how many people that you're actually going to be able to, to uh, either have come to your broadcast accidentally or come to your broadcast and connect with you are going to be the people that you connect with. And you can do that 
in the same way that you did when you were when you were maybe trying to build your following on Twitter. What you want to do is you want to connect with influential people in the niche on Twitter. Of course, you're going to do the very same thing on Periscope, but by doing it on Twitter, those people who are actually part of Periscope are actually going to become part of your circle. So you can do that immediately after the broadcast, and you should be doing that between broadcasts, connecting with people on Twitter who are influential. Of course, you want to do the same thing with those people that are your potential customers. Again, this is a very important aspect of being able to build up your following. Now, one thing you want to do is to take a few minutes after the broadcast and find out who your commenters were. And if possible, you want to follow up with them. Follow up with them by either answering their question or letting them know that they can get more information or letting them know where they can get a free giveaway or something. But do something to follow up with people who were engaged enough to comment with you. And if your broadcast was saved on Catch, then that's going to be an easy thing. So that's another reason for you to use Catch.com because they're going to have those comments available for you. And it's going to be easy for you to be able to find those commenters. And again, these these are the people who who are engaged enough with your brand or with you in order to talk to you. So you want to make sure that you're talking to them. Those are also going to be the people that are going to be likely to share your broadcast with others. So again, it's very important for you to reach out to those people if time allows and if it is feasible within your business. Now, other social media experts recommend that you reshare out your expiring broadcast. Now, this is not the YouTube, uh, the, not the YouTube link. This is the link that people can only see uh, from Periscope, your broadcast, and you want to do that by via an application called Buffer. And what this does is this will allow you to get people to your broadcast. And the benefit is there's already built-in scarcity because of the fact that this broadcast is going to expire within 24 hours of your actual end of the broadcast. So by by letting people know that they've only got a few hours left before, and, and this is why you want to use the buffer application because you want it to go out at a specific time and you want it to be said that they've only got a certain amount of time before they can watch it. Okay, so if you want to send it out three hours before you know your broadcast is going to expire, you can say that through the buffer application. And of course, you do want to wrap up and send out the YouTube video to your entire community. And do that with a reminder of when your next broadcast is. Again, this is going to engage people more with what it is that you did on the broadcast, maybe bring more people back. Now, in a future video, we are going to be talking about things that you can be doing in order to boost your following on Periscope, but certainly giving people the opportunity to see what it is that they missed on your live broadcast will give you more uh, will give you more momentum. It'll get it'll, it'll generate more interest in your live broadcast. So with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video.